UFC 303 reaction. Let's begin with Ian Machado Gary versus Michael Venom Page. Michael Venom Page was so fast. I thought the live streaming was on fast forward and I needed to fix it. He was so damn fast. I'm like, like for every few seconds I was like, what? Am I sure this isn't on fast forward? Because it looks like it. But no, Michael Venom Page was just that fast. And he landed some good shots on Ian Gary in the second round. Good shots to the face. And Ian Gary was claiming he was just as fast. And nope, not at all. He didn't want to engage with Michael Page in the striking whatsoever. But he did prove that he has better grappling and wrestling credentials because he did control uh, Michael Venom Page in the first and third round and was able to neutralize the danger that came from standing with Michael Page. But I read on Twitter that this fight between Ian, Gary and Michael Page was the biggest that's not him performance or he's not him performance and I have to agree with that because if Ian Gary is supposed to become champion, this fight made it look like that's less likely to happen. But maybe no one else is as good as Michael Page on the feet, and so he'll be able to pull that off. But I don't know. It, that wasn't a very convincing victory by, by Ian Gary. Uh, but we'll see who, who he's going to fight next. I don't know if Jack de la Maddalena is going to fight Shevkat Rachmanov or what they're going to do with Sean Brady. So maybe one of those will be his next opponent. But Dana White said Colby Covington never turned down a fight that they offered him. Never turned down any fight. So maybe that Ian Gary Colby Covington fight might still happen. And before this fight, I thought, oh, Ian Gary, Ian Gary might get him. Maybe that's why Colby Covington is turning down the fight. Maybe because he's a dangerous prospect. But after this fight, I'm more, I'm more confident that Colby Covington would actually win. On to the next fight. We also had Joe Pfeiffer versus um, Marc-Andre Bariush. And Joe Pfeiffer basically knocked him out immediately. Not immediately because Joe Pfeiffer was a lot more patient in this fight and because he learned a lot from the Jack Manson fight and he was leg kicking his opponent and you can you could see in his demeanor that Joe Pfeiffer was ready for all three rounds and he was not in a rush. He wasn't going to go looking for the knockout but if it came, it came and it came quickly and he landed to the head, it looked like it was to the back of the head, but it came from the front. And he landed that punch good. And Joe Pfeiffer's hype is back again. And we'll see what he, he'll do next. The Paul Craig call out is not my favorite. Because I, that's not, Joe Pfeiffer versus Paul Craig is not the most enticing matchup because we're pretty comfortable in saying Joe Pfeiffer can win. But who knows, maybe Paul Craig controls him in the ground. I think a better fight would be Joe Pfeiffer versus Chris Curtis. Another fight was Peyton Talbot, otherwise known as the real Sean O'Malley, versus uh, Yanis Gamuri, or Yanis Gamuri. And Peyton Talbot uh, knocked him out right away. And Peyton Talbot made a video telling Yanis Gamuri how to, de to defeat him. And he said, you need to leg kick me a lot. And Yanis Gamuri went for a leg kick in the first few seconds. So I don't know if that was a trick by Talbot to help himself get the victory. But he seems like a really good person. So probably he really was just being kind, but got the knockout anyway. I wonder who who Peyton Talbot is going to fight next. I think a good matchup would be Peyton Talbot versus Cody Garbrandt. And of course, the main event, 
Alex Pereira versus Yuri Prohaska. Alex Pereira just beat the living snot out of Prohaska. Like, Prohaska's defense was even more, sham more in shambles in this fight than in the first fight. I don't know why. And before, before the end of the first round, with only a few seconds remaining, I thought, I predicted that Prohaska was going to lunge in to do a surprise surprise attack because oh no one would expect this or that's just what brave men do they attack in the last few seconds so I kind of predicted that and I thought if I'm predicting this Pereira's going to predict this and he's going to be ready for it and he was and he knocked down Prohaska with a left hook in the last second of the first round Prohaska then the bell rang Prohaska was like calling Pereira to come join him in the ground but not realizing that the round was over because his brain was so scrambled and in the second round Pereira finished him off with the left kick a brutal head kick brutal head kick to Prohaska's face and then started Prohaska fell to the ground and Pereira started beating the shit out of him in the ground and Herb Dean did not stop it early. He waited a few seconds so that there were no complaints and then intervened. Sad for Prohaska, I thought, I was hoping, I was hoping he would put up more of a performance. I was hoping this would be a great rivalry, a great trilogy, an epic matchup, but it's not that. It's not this because one of the fighters is clearly better than the other. And Prohaska put out a video saying he either needs to evolve or never fight again. Hopefully, the evolution includes better fundamentals, better, better defense, and not just going in recklessly. But as for Pereira, wow. Joe, Rick, Joe Rogan was beckoning him to, to go to heavyweight. He's saying all the fans want you to go to heavyweight. And Pereira's like, we'll see if the fans want it. I'll, I'll do whatever the fans want. And, and Joe Rogan is, yeah, well, the fans want you to go to heavyweight. So that's what you should do. Does Pereira beat Aspinall? It looks more like a possibility now. Pereira is looking to be one of the goats of the sport fast tracking to be one of the goats of the sport but there's a difference between Yuri Prohaska a talented Czech kid that was scouted out by some Czech coaches and none of his coaches told him off for being bad defensively because he's getting all these knockouts whatever he's doing is clearly work working so his coaches probably became yes men and didn't tell him off too much for his defense just because he was getting the job done pretty much every time. There's a difference between that and Tom Aspinall, who's been bred since a child to be technically sound in every facet, wrestling, striking. His father is a mastermind telling him to be pinpoint precisely perfect in defense, attack, wrestling, striking, uh, jiu-jitsu. And someone so technically uh, precise is going to have the defensive fundamentals to stand with Alex Pereira and not make a shameless or I don't want to say a shameless or stupid mistake like Alex Pereira does. I mean like Yuri Prohaska does where he just goes in recklessly. So Tom Aspinall is the favorite for that and most likely he would win. But now it's more intriguing. Maybe Alex Pereira does get it done and becomes the first three triple weight champ. Another option would be Alex Pereira versus Magomed Ankalaev. Would the UFC be looking to do that? First, we'll have to see how the Tom Aspinall versus Chris Curtis, I mean, the Tom Aspinall versus Curtis plays fight goes. And I don't know if it's more likely to, I don't know if a fast knockout of Curtis Blades 
by Tom Aspinall will make him more likely fight Alex Pereira or less likely because I'm wondering if they're afraid of making Alex Pereira lose hype. I'm wondering if they're afraid that Alex Pereira will lose hype if he loses to Tom Aspinall. And so they'll actually be more confident if Tom Aspinall's victory of the Curtis Blades over, is not as emphatic. But yeah, Magomed Ankalaev is also the favourite versus Alex Pereira, I found, which I'm a bit surprised about. I think Alex Pereira should be the favourite. I think Magomed Ankalaev can win, but, but I wouldn't have had him as the favourite, especially as Magomed Ankalaev says he'll strike with him, which, which I believe, I, I don't think he's lying about that. And he could even win in the striking, but... But especially since he said that, I think Alex Pereira should be the favourite. Yes, after striking with Jan Blahovic, he went to the wrestling. But even if uh, uh, Magomed Ankalaev plans to strike with Alex Pereira for, for a few seconds or a few minutes, I think Alex Pereira has a great chance of getting the knockout. So, so I think Alex Pereira should be the favourite. Like and subscribe.